Hey guys, uh, sitting here on the rocks on the Zambezi River. We continue with our topic about uh, the reproduction of uh, the wild animals in the wilderness. Now there is a question that is uh, frequently asked by many people uh, that says what type of mating system is practiced by animals in the wilderness or in the bush? That's a very good question and uh, that's a very interesting one because we need to know how these animals reproduce. So as we said earlier that we're going to be touching different animals each and every time. I have to look around. Uh, there are some hippos close by. No hippos are so territorial. Sometimes you have to look around and you guys have to watch my back. Who knows what comes behind me? Please tell me if something comes behind me. Okay, so this is a great, good question that uh, you need to ask when you get into the world. Um, how do they mate? How do they choose their partners and stuff like that? And also how do they raise their young ones? So the mating system is used to describe the, I mean, uh, the ways in which uh, the animal societies are structured in relation to sexual behavior. So this is how we describe these animals and their social behavior and their structures when it comes to mating. So there are two types of mating or the two types of uh, systems of mating or reproduction that is done by animals. There is a term that is called monogamy. Monogamy is whereby one animal chooses one mating partner either for life or just for mating and reproduction purposes there are some animals that chooses a partner one partner for life and that partner will be there for mating and that partner will be there for raising for helping the raising of the young one so we've seen some leopards doing that we've seen some dikers and other um, uh, solitary animals doing that they partner for life and also they help one another in looking after the young one and also in raising the young one. And also there is the term polygamy, just like in uh, human beings, whereby one man will have many wa uh, wives or women. Um, let's talk of Africa as we are in Africa. You know, in Africa it is our culture, it is like in our blood that uh, a man must have many wives, many cultures accept that you know and also their wives are okay with that you can have two you can have four yeah, you can have five six ten wives and we've seen some of uh, the presidents having many wives some of the kings having many wives of which um, culturally it was a way of uh, showing the dominance that I'm a man I'm capable of doing this and also it was a way of making many babies so that they can help in farming and uh, doing other things in their home. So yeah, nowadays things are changing a little bit of which, uh, like I myself, I've got one wife. Yeah, things are changing. So this happens in uh, animals whereby they are polygamous. That means one partner have many mating partners. Especially if you look at the impalas during the mating season, you will find that there is only one bull working with all these women we normally call them the lucky ones so he's a lucky man he's got 30 women and he has to take care of them uh, all at once so that's what we call polygamy and also this term polygamy is a wide or a broad term and it's a bit complicated because it depends on which sex has many mating partners because in the animal kingdom Females also can have many mating partners and as well as men can have many mating partners. So we're going to define and we're going to break it down showing you how this works and who has many mating partners and the term that we use to call those with many mating partners. So just hang around as we continue with this topic. There are some hippos here. I think they are guarding their territory. They look like they have but there are hippos, but there are the hippos there. Yes, as we continue with the reproduction of animals or the mating systems of the animals. So, as I said earlier that we are going to break it down, especially the term 
polygamy. We are going to break it down. There are so many categories that falls under polygamy, depending on who is having how many mating partners. Be it the male having many females or the female having many males. So this happens in our day-to-day -day living in the wilderness, you know, whereby animals will met with different partners. Be it the males, be it the females. All right, there's a term polygyny or polygyny. This is where one male has many mating females. This is called polygyny or polygyny. This is where one male mates with many females. So it happens mostly in many territorial and non-territorial animals whereby they met with many partners. They have to fight most of the time, fighting for mating uh, uh, chances, especially the impalas. You find them fighting uh, to the extent of killing one another. Uh, comes to lions as well, taking over the pride. You have to fight, uh, fight and you show your strength and you show your ability, you show that you are a strong man, you can take care of the whole herd. Then after that, when it comes to impalas, whereby the group will have something like 30 females or more, he has to take care of those females. He has to mate with those females, make sure that he makes babies. So I think that's the transferring of the stronger genes uh, that are healthy and strong enough to fight and defend uh, the young ones. So this is the term polygyny or polygyny. That's where one male has many mating partners. Then there is a term polyandry. Polyandry, that's where one female has many mating partners. This is more common in birds like uh, the African jacana, the sandpipers and the other birds. But anyway, we still have some other animals, especially the marsupials and also these uh, primitive animals that are found in Australia. There is, um, that's where we find uh, this uh, polyandry taking place, of which one female has many mating males. I wonder if this was going to happen to humans and uh, I hope we will wipe the whole world in one day, killing one another, whereby one male is not around, I'm not around and someone is there to take over my wife. That's uh, something funny, but it happens in the wilderness, whereby one female has many mating partners. So guys, I'm trying to teach you, I'm trying to raise the guys who know what they're doing and what to tell their clients when they're out there doing their guiding skills. But also, it's not just like uh, we're teaching guides just to make money and stuff like that. But this is how we teach people to conserve nature. We are more into conservation and uh, we want to take it to another level whereby we teach each and every kid while they are still young to conserve their nature. This is our God-given thing and we have to take care of them. If you look at all this water that you see flowing here, this is our nature that we have to take care of, that we have to guard jealously and we have to uh, pass it on to our kids as well and they have to teach uh, this to their kids also so that we conserve what we have. All this water flowing all the way to the, Zambez, uh, to the Victoria Falls. As you can see there's some smoke that you see on the other side there, that's the falls right about a kilometer now. As you can hear as well, the sound of the water is actually more intense. That's the falls falling over there. It's only that now it's too light. Uh, you can't see much of the smoke, but there is some smoke just above there, above the trees that you see above the island over there. That's where the Victoria Falls are. Please let's um, conserve our nature. This is what I'm trying to preach to whosoever. Those who are not guides, those who are not intending to be guides, you have to learn. Please, if you're new to this channel, you have to like, subscribe and ring that notification bell so that whenever I drop another video, you are the first one to be notified. I'm going to take you slowly and easily teaching you the basic of nature and the guiding as well as the conservation of nature. Slowly but sure, we are getting there. So we still have more to learn and uh, please hang on, we're still working. Thank you so much for now.
if you are in the national park you have to follow the rules and regulations of the national park so many rules here you see this one it says parks and wildlife notice do not go beyond this sign trespassers will be prosecuted and no parking normally we used to have people walking all the way through up until they get close to the water there of which it was a bit risky because it's now close to the falls and the water current sometimes could be very fast and strong of which you can be swept away by the water so are you not allowed to go all the way beyond there so we're going to stand here um, since we're not allowed to go beyond and uh, this is the fence to the falls to the park where we do the walk of the falls and this one here is uh, called the VIP entrance and uh, nobody else is allowed to walk through this gate it's only the president and the ministers when they are here and the other delegates that uh, comes with their president yeah that's why it's so beautiful like this this looks like a buffalo tracks they're very big bull the buffalo so it might be buffalo close by who knows big check wow yeah here's the evidence the buffalo dung not too fresh though big check Not too fresh probably from yesterday in the morning it looks dry from the top yeah, looks like guys from yesterday in the morning. Nowadays it's too hot, it dries up quickly. And there are some buffaloes in this area. So I have to watch my back. Because if they came here yesterday in the morning, they are more likely to come back to drink water today. This is a very interesting place. It's a marshy area. Always with the water and uh, see these water puddles there. And uh, the elephant down on the other side. It feels that these three elephants come to do the mud bathing. They come to do here the mud bathing. The elephants love mud bathing a lot. Uh, it's like uh, it kills the bacteria. When the mud that is uh, stuck on the skin dries up, it kills the bacteria. When it kills off, it kills off with the bacteria and the other things that uh, like uh, lies and stuff. So this is what they love to do and any other animals, the buffalo too, they love to do this. So that's where the term the Daga boys came from when they are full of mud. So we call mud the Daga. So that's what they love to do as well as the watch work. They love to come here to the mud battle. Okay, as we proceed with our topic about uh, the sexual system or the mating system, of uh, the animals in the world. If we have what we call the polygenandry or polygynandry, this is where multiple males and multiple females will just mate like that. So you just mix and mate with whatsoever you want. There is no uh, structure, there is nothing like uh, uh, who is uh, dominant and whatsoever. You just mate randomly like that. So it's just uh, whoever comes gets what you want so this is another way of mating that is practiced by some animals whereby they just mix and uh, there is no selection whosoever has a chance can mate with whosoever so this is within the social groups that do not have the hierarchs and uh, the, the dominance and stuff like that so they just met with whosoever comes here so this actually brings in their social life because they tend to bond more most because um, I mean now uh, they are all in love so in a group if that happens in a certain species of animals that shows that they are bonded very much because they care for one another so this is called polykinandry or polygenandry this is where both sexes just met just chooses whatsoever they meet they met with within the group there is no structure there is no hierarchy there is no selection it's just mating randomly like that this is called polygenandry okay guys that 
this place. It's frequented by the buffaloes. There are some buffaloes just behind the reeds there. You know, if my zoom will work very well, there are some buffaloes there. They're coming down to this puddle or this water pond to do the mud bathing. They love this place. I could tell by that dung that uh, these buffaloes might have drank yesterday in the morning and they will come again today to drink water. Those are the buffaloes over there that you see just behind the reeds. You can see those are the buffaloes there behind the reeds. So the wind is calm. They can't smell me. They are still calm. i sure that they can't smell me. They are not sensing anything. See some of them walking there behind the trees. They are going down to the Zambezi to drink water. Those are the buffaloes there. I love this place. I love coming to this place because that's where many things happen. I get to see some wildlife. Yes, this is beautiful. See the small, some of uh, the small ones or the young ones, the cows there. And uh, these ones are still coming, approaching me. They can't smell me. They can't smell me. But I have to be careful though. These animals could be vicious. They are so dangerous. Look at that bull. That's a bull. The one that is coming towards me is a bull. Okay guys, don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel so that we learn more. They are mating systems. I will try to put them down in the description box. So please make sure to go down to the description box and check how each and every animal that is listed there does their mating. I will put them in groups. So also please in the comment box, don't forget to comment if you are in to this journey of uh, nature conservation and guiding. Just type in I'm in and I'll be sure to respond to each and every comment that you put there. Please share with the other guys that you think uh, would love to be part of this journey and uh, the people that you think would love to know about the nature and the conservation and the guiding skills of Africa as well as the current affairs of Africa and tourism. Thank you guys. Keep in touch. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.